Hey guys, so today we have a list of more Dodge Challenger concept vehicles that I wanted to dig up and share with you, all of them just a single copy produced by Chrysler themselves. We'll start with the 2009 Challenger 1320 concept and move up chronologically from there. Make sure to check out part 1 as well which covered another 5 concepts and the rest we will be looking at today. Hope you enjoy the video and let's get on with it. So in 2019, Dodge released the Challenger RT Scat Pack 1320, a drag focused vehicle named after the quarter mile distance of 1320 feet, and also a very capable one, able to hit the quarter mile in just 11.7 seconds at 115 miles per hour stock. Ten years prior, at the 2009 SEMA show, Dodge was already cooking up ideas with the first version of the 1320. The Challenger 1320 began its life as a Mopar Drag Pack Challenger, which was a race-only special order Challenger that was designed for competitive drag racing, and those come out every few years. The Mopar Underground team then took over, stripping down the Drag Pack and adding some new technology to make the vehicle street legal. You'll notice the custom bulging hood with a massive scoop, taking inspiration from the 1968 Dodge Dart Hemi. It's also got a custom front spoiler, custom grill, and headlamp surround bezel. The paint chosen was Acidic Hue, a non-metallic bold yellow color, and there are some matte black graphics to complete the look. Finally, you'll notice the 1320 decals on the front fender that remind you of drag racing lights. The interior is very bare bones as this car has the functional purpose. Gone are the rear seats, center console, and stereo system for weight reduction. Dodge Viper seats have also been added up front, with a Challenger SRT8 steering wheel and a Hearst shifter with a custom ball knob. Of course, the main focus here would be the Mopar 426 cubic inch all-aluminum Hemi V8 crate engine, generating 556 horsepower and 540 pound-feet of torque in this vehicle. The 1320 also had Mopar long tube headers, an exhaust system, and electric cutouts added, with the exhaust exiting through custom side pipes. All the power is sent through a 6-speed manual transmission. Other upgrades include a custom Dynatrack rear housing with Mopar Dana 60 internals, and a selectable ARB locking differential, which are some pretty cool features. And these are the switches for the air locker. That's the compressor, and this is engages the locker. So when that's on, it's basically a spool. When it's off, it's an open rear end. They're really cool. I've had one in a car before. They're bitching. This right here is the exhaust cutout. It goes from medium loud to basically open exhaust. The 1320 rides on police wheels with Mickey Thompson street legal drag radials and a fully adjustable coilover suspension. Various drag strip runs put it around 12 seconds to the quarter mile. So this 1320 concept never made it, but it did open the door for other drag focused vehicles with great straight line performance, like the Demon, and of course the production 1320 10 years later. A few years after that, Mopar Underground came to the 2011 SEMA Auto Show with more custom vehicles. The Challenger was back with the SRT8 ACR, another track-focused street-legal machine that drew inspiration from the Challenger SRT8 392 and the Viper SRT10 ACR. The ACR stands for American Club Racer, and that moniker had been used on the Dodge Viper and even on the Dodge Neon SRT4, but this was the first time it was featured on the Challenger. Just like the Viper SRT10 ACR, there isn't much done to the engine output, but there are many changes to improve the handling and reduce weight. This time around, the Mopar team started on the inside, first by taking out the rear seats and replacing them with a roll bar and a fire extinguisher. For more weight reduction, carbon fiber door panels were added, along with lightweight adjustable Sparco race seats with safety harnesses finished in catskin leather. The stock door panels are gone, and in their place are carbon fiber inserts with red painted reinforcement bars. The final interior additions were an SRT 3-spoke flat bottom steering wheel, SRT gauge cluster, a bright pedal kit, a carbon fiber center console from the Drag Pack Challenger, and a Mopar short throw shifter. Next, the Mopar Underground team continued that white and red interior theme on the outside with many design cues from the Viper SRT 10 ACR. A carbon fiber hood, trunk, rear spoiler, and taillight surround replaced the stock pieces. The rest of the body is painted in white, while the roof gets a charcoal finish. There are also some flame red accents with an offset stripe that runs along the entire length of the car, as well as painted mirrors and brake calipers. Mopar added some 5-spoke 20-inch alloy wheels and a red ACR fender badge to let you know that this isn't any regular Challenger. As I mentioned, there's no direct change to the engine output, as the 392 6.4-liter Hemi V8 continues here with 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. 
However, there are some other performance enhancements with a coilover suspension, front and rear strut tower braces, a front splitter, cap back exhaust, cold air intake, custom headers, and Goodyear F1 supercar performance tires. So unfortunately, this Challenger SRT8 ACR was only a design study, but it was a really cool model and would have been awesome to see this ACR package offered in limited quantities. Years later, Dodge did come through with, I guess, a similar vehicle with the 2018 Demon. Now you probably haven't heard of this one, the Rich Evans Dodge Challenger. This was a one-of-a-kind partnership between Mopar and acclaimed custom car builder Rich Evans. Some of his custom vehicles have appeared in various TV shows and movies, like Pimp My Ride, Monster Garage, Man Cave and Chop, and Cut and Rebuild. In July of 2010, Dodge brought a new Challenger RT to Evans' shop, Huntington Beach Body Works in Southern California, and they also filmed a couple episodes with Evan for their Mopar YouTube channel. Evans then had free reign to customize the Challenger to his liking, and the car was displayed at the 2010 SEMA show later that year in November. Evans chose to make a car that was designed to stand out, and he's certainly done that with this blue and silver paint and graphics combination. There's also an exterior body kit added, with a splitter, rocker panels, flares, diffuser, rear wing and hood scoop, and other parts like the grille and wheels are also custom done. The interior was also customized as Catskin partnered up to supply the leather, suede and stitching for the seats, door panels, floor panels, headliner, center console, armrests, the carpets, and more and there's also a custom steering wheel. Although the exterior might overshadow everything else, the performance is nothing to laugh at as Mopar supplied a 451 cubic inch or 7.4 liter Hemi Gen 3 engine that produced 550 horsepower. Evans also got to choose anything he wanted from the Mopar parts catalog, so this thing got front and rear strut tower braces, a suspension kit, shifter, cat back exhaust system, cold air intake, engine cover, headers, and a vented TA style hood. So love it or hate it, Evans talked about how he wanted to be unique with this task, saying, quote, The current generation of enthusiasts are all about being different and personalizing their cars. This project demonstrates how they can use Mopar to transform their vehicle into something original and exciting, end quote. Next up, we have the 2014 Dodge Challenger TA concept. I won't be spending too much time on this one since it actually was released in almost identical form a few years later as a 2017 model. But of course, the concept came first, and it's actually a little better than the production version. This vehicle is meant to be a modern interpretation of the legendary TA package that was available on Challengers in the 1970s, and thus it draws some inspiration from those older Challengers. This concept got sublime green paint that was complemented nicely by full-length matte black graphics on both sides. The matte black look continues on the hood, which is the 2015 SRT style, and on the rear deck lid spoiler and front splitter as well. The lights feature the air catcher on both the driver's and passenger side to get more air to the engine. The interior was race-inspired, featuring a flat bottom steering wheel, carbon fiber seats that have TA embroidered logos and safety harnesses, a rear seat delete with a roll bar for weight reduction, door release handles, a pistol grip shifter, and a 180 mile per hour speedometer. As for the performance, Dodge put the 6.4 liter 392 Hemi in this TA concept, the same found in the 2017 and up TA392 production models. The wheels were 20 by 9.5 inch matte black lightweight forged aluminum with Brembo six piston calipers, the real TA would get four pistons in the end. The exhaust featured electronic cutouts and black tips. So this was just a little look at the TA concept in 2014, before the real thing was released in 2017. The next concept celebrates the 45th anniversary of the Scat Pack Club that was offered back in 1968, and Dodge decided to offer this Scat Pack for the 2014 Dodge Challenger, Charger, and Dart models. These packages never really caught on like Mopar had hoped for, but they are still available at dealers, but instead we did get Scat Pack models for the Charger and Challenger the next year. At the 2013 SEMA show though, Dodge showed up with this trio, so we'll take a look at the Challenger. We can start with performance where there were three stages for the Scat Package, 1, 2, and 3. The goal was to bump up the output of the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 and offer these packages to the public, adding more power and modifications while still keeping the factory warranty fully intact, as usually the performance mods will void the warranty. The first has just three mods, a Mopar cold air intake, Mopar catback exhaust, and performance calibrated engine controller. If we use the stock Hemi numbers that are paired with the manual transmission, this engine makes 375 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque stock. So the stage one will add an extra 18 horsepower and 18 pound-feet of torque, bumping things up to 393 horsepower and 428 pound-feet of torque, which is not a huge improvement considering this package costs $2,195. The SCAP Package 2 adds everything from the first as well as another engine calibration and a Mopar Performance camshaft. 
That's another heavy cost of $1,895 on top of Scat Pack 1 for an extra 30 horsepower. Finally, Scat Package 3 adds yet another performance calibration, CNC ported cylinder heads, and Mopar high flow headers. In total, after all three packages are added, you gain 75 horsepower and 47 pound feet of torque. So that will be 450 horsepower and 457 pound feet of torque in total out of the 5.7. The Scat Pack 3 costs an extra $5,000. So in total, all of the scat packages will cost you a whopping $9,085 for that 75 horsepower bump. Each stage also does offer an electronic variable quick dump side exhaust. So this concept of course would come with all three scat packages as well as some visual improvements, like a black hood and side valence, black fuel filler door, hood pins, and sequential taillights. The wheels are 20 inch classics that are finished in hyper black too. Those combine with a Mopar coilover kit and a stabilizer bar to handle better than a stock Challenger. Two years later at the 2015 SEMA show, Dodge came out with a vehicle that really turned a lot of heads and generated tons of interest with the Dodge Challenger GT all-wheel drive concept. So not only did this feature a Hemi with all-wheel drive, but it was also the first Challenger to feature a wide-body kit from the factory, and a similar look was used later on for the Demon and then the wide-body models. This was a one-of-a-kind concept, as people had been asking about an all-wheel drive Challenger for years. Remember, there was an all-wheel drive Charger RT from 2006 to 2014, but the Challenger never got the same treatment. Mopar designed an absolutely beautiful vehicle with destroyer grey, matte black, and header orange accents contrasting the body. The roof, trunk, and hood are all finished in matte black, but a body color offset destroyer grey stripe runs along the entire length of the car, flanked by header orange on the sides, and also around the grille and taillight surrounding areas. To go along with the wider body, wider 5-spoke wheels were added, 20 by 10 inches in the front and 20 by 11 inches in the rear. There's also a body kit with an aggressive front chin splitter and rear spoiler to go along with black Mopar quad exhaust tips, a black fuel filler door, and Mopar design and GT badging. The interior matches the outside with header orange stitching added on the catskin leather seats, center console, shifter, and door panels. The leather seats have suede inserts, and Mopar added a flat bottom steering wheel, Mopar Challenger sill guards, and a special trunk mat. As for the performance, the all-wheel drive system was an identical version from the 2014 Charger RT all-wheel drive, and that got paired with the 5.7 Hemi of course, and a ZF 8-speed automatic, as well as the Scat Pack 3 performance kit from the last concept. So it did have 450 horsepower and 457 pound-feet of torque, and estimates were made that it could do 0-60 to in about 4.7 seconds. So this was one awesome concept, and while we did see all-wheel drive come out for the Challenger SXT and GT models later on, that has been restricted to the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 models so far. This concept did pave the way for Destroyer Grey to be used in production vehicles, as it was so popular on the concept that Dodge decided to add it to their color palette the next year. The only question left is where is our V8 all-wheel drive models, and will we ever see those again? So that's the end of this video guys, which concept was your favorite out of these 6 Dodge Challengers? I personally love the GT all-wheel drive concept. Chrysler has definitely transformed some very cool ideas into reality and brought a few awesome vehicles to life, whether in concept or production form. And these are just a few examples. So thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.